Did you catch the size increase that was announced last week? That and more is coming up. Hi, I'm Adam Saxon, and today's Thursday, which means we're going to do our information roundup. That's right, they're back. And before we get into the news, take a look at this. This is a picture my friend posted yesterday asking if I was also working as an electrician. What do you think? First up on the list is a blog post by Steve Howard from Angry Analytics. Personally, I love the Lego head that he has on his website. And he looks at using APIs with Power BI, specifically talking about OData and OAuth and how you can actually interact with those from Power BI. So if you struggle with this topic and you're not sure how all OAuth fits in, you're not sure like, okay, I've got this URL that someone gave me and that's supposedly gonna give me some data, take a look at this blog post. He goes through and walks you through how to use it, what it is, and tries to demystify the whole thing. So check it out. Next on the list is a blog post by Bill Anton over at Bring Your Own Business Intelligence, or BYOBI. Try saying that three times fast. And he takes a look at Power BI versus Power Pivot. So specifically working with Excel versus Power BI Desktop to basically kind of prototype or test out or strategize what you're doing from a business intelligence perspective before maybe upgrading to say tabular. He does a good job of looking at both sides of it. There are pros and cons. And what I really liked out of this blog post, and I had this discussion when I was at Pass BA, is that there's no one tool that answers everything. And so you need to know the different tools that are available to you and how they fit into what your business needs are and then make a decision based on that. And so he tries to weigh both of those from Power BI and Excel's perspective to really give you an idea of why you should make one choice versus another and where you can go from there. So be sure to check it out. Next on the list is an announcement for Q&A. And if you've used Q&A, you may have noticed that you can't use it for live connections or you know anything going through the Enterprise Gateway that's not an imported data set. So with this announcement, there is a preview that's available now where you can use Q&A for a live connection to an AS Tabular instance. That's incredible. As part of this announcement, we're announcing that other data sources will be coming up down the pipe. And there's also some other improvements just to Q&A in general. So if you're using Q&A or you haven't checked it out and you wanna take a look at it, be sure to check out this blog post. Next up is a deep dive for query parameters and templates within inside of Power BI Desktop. And allowing the ability to do query parameters within inside of the UI allows for flexibility inside of your queries, your M syntax, inside of calculated measures. It, it provides a whole source of options for you. Combine that with templates, and now you can actually set up the model and the report, base it on a, a parameter inside of your query, and then template that out, and you can have different, you can have that one file and use that for like different countries or different segments of your business. If that piques your interest, check out this blog post and see all the details. Next up is the May update for the Power BI service. The big ticket item on this was the announcement that we have increased the data model limit from 250 meg to one gig. And there was much rejoicing. This is for imported data models specifically. You still have your overall cap from a user perspective, but your per data set limit is now one gigabyte. This does not apply to, if you're using the Excel experience, so Excel online, when you have that option to go between importing the data set or leaving the Excel experience, those items are still restricted to 250 meg. It also highlights some of the recent updates for row level security, such as the ability to use Azure Active Directory security groups within row level security, as well as the ability to use RLS against direct query connections, the ability to favor dashboards, and also updates to the Analyze in Excel feature. So be sure to check out the blog post to see all of the items that have come out in the last month. All right, what was your favorite item? Go ahead and leave that up in the poll in the upper right and tell me what you thought. Also, you can leave that down in the comments below to continue the conversation and be sure to like and share this video with your friends. If this is your first time here, go ahead and subscribe. Every Thursday, I do an information roundup just like this where I look at the last week. 
find things that were interesting to me and share that out with you. And every Tuesday, I take a look at a technical item where I either look at how something works, how to troubleshoot something, or look at a new feature. And really, this is about you. I wanna help you be more effective and successful in the things that you do. So go ahead and subscribe and be part of the conversation.